temperature, conductivity, salinity. 9.88. I'm calling start at 848. WATAR is an acronym for Watershed Approach to Toxics Assessment and Restoration. Amongst the various features of that program is the collaboration between water, watershed, site remediation, and fisheries programs uh, in the state of Delaware. Uh, this particular year we're focusing on the Christina Basin uh, and Shellpot Creek watersheds. And one of the things that we are doing under the program is coming in and doing comprehensive testing to see where we stand. Uh, we want to know uh, where concentrations are in the water, sediment, and fish where they're elevated. We'll use the information uh, to adjust fish advisories if necessary and to help us identify where we may have source areas that we can drill in and uh, clean up those areas so that we can see improvements. Throughout this, this exercise that we just did, we took uh, water samples, surface water samples, uh, we took sediment samples, and we collected fish tissue, uh, so fish samples as well. Oh, it's good. Uh, for the water samples, uh, it included 55 gallon drums, uh, it included 20 liter stainless steel uh, canisters, it included 2.5 liter amber bottles uh, and it included uh, 10 liter uh, plastic carboy samples. Now all those uh, containers uh, seems like a lot but uh, each of those containers were designated for certain types of analysis uh, which included uh, you know, PCBs, dioxins and furans, uh, polyaromatic hydrocarbons, uh, organic chlorine pesticides, uh, and metals. So, you know, we had uh, a lot of parameters that we had to cover, uh, and all of these, uh, these containers go to separate laboratories, special laboratories. What we're doing now is purging the tubing uh, to make sure there's no residual material. In order to do a certain method of analysis, we need to get a large volume of water that's fully representative of the stream area. So in a lot of locations, we sample sort of right in the middle of the flowing water. Good. Good right here. Filled up a 55-gallon drum, kept that sample cool, and then transported it down to a University of Delaware in Lewis, where they actually centrifuged out the particulate. Um, we had some preliminary results where uh, we weren't really getting much carbon back. There wasn't much particulate, but the water itself was actually quite clear, uh, which was surprising to us. But at the same time, there are some locations that we're going to where it's quite easy to get quite a bit of particulate material within the water. Each 55-gallon drum sample weighed about 400 pounds, so we had to use a heavy-duty truck for transport. And obviously, it would have been very difficult to move that drum once it was full, and that's why we use the uh, transfer pumps. Sediment samples are collected, uh, by us anyway, in a couple of different ways. Uh, in in the, the headwaters and some of the shallower water we have in the state, it's real easy to just slip on a pair of waders, uh, walk into the stream. We pick three, four locations if we can. Ideally, middle, side, side. But in this rocky part here, we can't really sample rocks. So we have to find the sediment between the rocks. We use uh, disposable equipment, uh, a tray, a scoop, maybe even our hands with some gloves on. Uh, and we scoop the sediment up, homogenize uh, some different locations within that stretch. And then we put them in the jars that are provided by the laboratory. Uh, the other way we do these, uh, when, when the water's a little too deep to do that, uh, so really anything over, I'd say, uh, two feet deep, uh, we have to use uh, what's called a ponok, or at least the piece of equipment we use as a ponok. And it's more of a clamshell device uh, that when we drop it, it hits the sediment bed, it will close, uh, grab a, a sample of the top few inches of sediment. We can bring that up on a rope and process it in the same way. We put them in a pan. Uh, we homogenize some different locations uh, from that stretch of river that, that we're sampling and put those in the jar and send it to the lab. For contaminants, it doesn't get any better than this one right yeah. here. Um, what is unique about uh, some of this work, you know, and I, I dare say probably unique across the U.S., uh, is, the, uh, is the specificity of the analyses that are being done and the sensitivity. So, for instance, in measuring PCBs, we look at individual uh, PCB compounds, and there's 209 of those, uh, and we look at those in order at concentrations down in the parts per quadrillion. This is an itsy bitsy amount, um, and some may say, well, you know, do you really need to go down that low? And the answer is yes, because uh, the, there's a relationship between 
the concentration of these compounds that are dissolved in the water and the concentration that accumulates in the fish. And so we go to great lengths uh, to be able to get usable data uh, in the water, uh, which then we can relate to concentrations of the fish in the sediment. You know, what we're trying to determine here is the relationship between what's in the water, what's in the sediment, and what's in the fish. These are not isolated compartments in the environment. Uh, the fish swim in the water. Uh, the fish are eating uh, you know, organisms that live on the bottom, uh, so they are exposed through various routes. Uh, we're trying to understand these relationships of all, all these various contaminants. It looked good to me. You had it straight down and straight up. Yeah, I got it. Ooh, that's some good stuff. I can go right here. You can pull a little okay. bit tighter. All told, we had about uh, two dozen employees from Denarac involved in uh, the sampling effort. We completed all that we had set out to do. In other words, we collected all the samples that we had set out to collect. Uh, we did it on time. Uh, and there were no injuries. I think the work that Delaware is doing is uh, really cutting edge. It's right on the edge of where science is right now. I don't believe there are many state agencies that are doing the level of work that we're doing to improve the quality of our waterways and our sediments in, in, in this short time frame. As we make investments in Delaware's water quality, we also make investments in jobs, we make investments in housing, we make investments on behalf of the people that live here. I live not too far from here, so as we make these improvements, I, I see the improvements, I see the growth, I'm happy to see all those things happening here. I also recognize there's a lot more work to do. This work is detailed, uh, we take it very seriously. 14.13. At the same time, we also have that. We took great pleasure in doing this work. We all feel that passion to do good work and to improve the environment in the state of Delaware. Uh, you know, it is our service to the citizens of the state and, you know, all of its aquatic life. And, you know, it's very meaningful to us uh, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to show in a year or so uh, that we're, you know, continuing to make improvements. We're seeing that. Uh, what we're hoping to do through this project is to accelerate that work. Uh, so instead of you know, 20 years required for the levels in the fish to drop to a point where uh, we could remove a fish advisory. We could do it in a matter of a couple years if we target uh, our efforts. Crab. Look at that. Oh, Caught no. crab. <laughs> Resilient ecosystem. <laughs> That's a sheer drop. I'm just going to turn this over and you're going to look to see if there's any leaks. Okay. There's a little hole there. Mm -hmm. All right, well, it's a little deeper than I expected. Yeah. Right there.